everyone, Tammy Treyer, TreyerWilderness.com. Glad to have you guys joining me today. It is a very unusual day here in northern Idaho. The sun is shining and then the clouds come in. We are actually steadfast today. Um, we've got a lot of snow here. Uh, started out with, um, well, over the last three weeks we've got over 60 inches of snow out here in our neck of the woods and we only have equipment that will enable us to basically keep our driveway clear. Um, good morning Tammy. So we've got lots of snow. Good morning Chad. And it has been quite the adventure back here. It is a great morning Chad. You need to share your celebrations my friend. Um, but it has just been crazy back here. Last night it just dumped rain. So we've got 60 inches of snow, 12 inch, 12 to 18 inches of snow on our lane that has been getting compacted with our truck and the chains and everything and the sun's been shining on it. Good morning Krista. So let me just say that the lane has been a bear. It's a rodeo getting in and out of here. We have four chains on, four wheel drive, and last night it decided to dump buckets of rain. So needless to say, we aren't even attempting to get out of here today. Um, last night getting in, we barely made it back here. And I'm going to share a little bit with you today on why it's important, regardless if you live off grid in the middle of nowhere or whether you live in a home in town why it's important for you to know how to do the things that need to get done to keep your home and your homestead moving forward. Thank you, Tammy. Um, last week I mentioned that the mountain man was um, tied up on a job. I didn't share the whole story. Um, the mountain man was tied up on a job, but he was in Georgia. He was in Atlanta, Georgia. He left not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. Um, this job fell in our lap. It um, is a job, type of job that pops up periodically for him. And uh, he works with a buddy back in Pennsylvania doing fabrication um, and, and welding work. And what they do on these big jobs is take out industrial... Um, commercial ovens so for like the big bread companies like Franz and uh, Crazy Mike's and uh, all the different bread companies that are out there they have these massive um, locations and and uh, these massive ovens and they do maintenance work on these ovens sometimes they'll take the entire oven out and put the new oven back in and these places can't be shut down for a long period of time so they're working 12 to 14 hour days, there's dual shifts going on, and it's quite crazy work. And that is what he was doing. He was gone all last week and working his butt off down there, extremely exhausted and, and tired out, and also in the city, which is not one of his favorite places to be. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Allie. Uh, uh, anyway, so he's in Atlanta, Georgia, and I dropped him at the airport on Sunday, came back home. I had picked up a desk for a friend. The mountain boy was staying here, uh, keeping an eye on things while I was gone and the animals. And I came back to get him. We went out, we delivered the desk, and on the way back in, we got stuck. So couldn't get it freed up. It was getting dark, so we just headed back in, walked in, and then went back out the, on Monday morning and it took two hours to get chains on it. It wouldn't move so getting chains on in an immobile vehicle is a little tricky to say the least. But um, got the chains on, got it back here and then it proceeded to snow and snow some more. I took the mountain boy home on Tuesday and was able to get him out of here and then I spent the rest of the week plowing and shoveling and plowing and shoveling and plowing and shoveling. And for those of you that know me, you know that I am on the healing side of um, breast implant illness and uh, have a lot of autoimmune issues and different things going on as a result. So pushing my body has been a real um, interesting 
factor in our lives because we never know what we're going to get when I push myself a little too hard. So actually, I'm really celebrating because what I shared with you last week on Facebook Live was something that carried me through last week and kept me going and enabled me to push myself to limits I haven't pushed myself to in a long time. It's also enabled me to uh, catapult over um, some big barriers for me, and I'm just thoroughly excited about it. There have been some messages popping through here. Good morning, Angela. And Diana says, hello, everyone. We are getting ready for our youngest daughter's wedding this Saturday. On the road right now, I'll catch the replay. Awesome. Thank you for popping in, and congrats on your puppies. I did not get a chance to respond to you, but um, I'm so excited that you guys had puppies, and and uh, that's definitely an, an awesome reason to be missing the Facebook Live. We missed you, though, but fantastic. So, anyway, what I shared last week with you was the Melt Method by Sue Hitzman and also um, Wired for Healing. And um, those two new protocols helped me so much last week to really push my body to extreme limits, to overcome a lot, to do a lot of detoxing. And the other thing was extreme empowerment that I was able to do these things. And the reason I mention all this is because it's really important, guys, for you to be able to do the things on the homestead if your spouse is gone. And that goes both ways because women do different tasks than men and vice versa. And when one party is gone, it's important to be able to pick up and keep things rolling and keep things going smoothly and knowing where things are, knowing how to operate things, knowing what to do when things fail or when you have problems with things, and also making sure you have enough of everything you need in place for when that person is gone. And it's it's really important. There's a lot, I mean, we do things very differently. Um, I'm just going to share this today. I mean, we do things very differently than the rest of the world. Uh, we live a little bit, I guess, archaic. We didn't think we did, but... Um, just as an example, um, the mountain man, when he was in Georgia, they had a coffee pot in the hotel room, uh, modern day Fandango convenience that we don't use. We use a percolator coffee. So, you know, retraining ourselves to learn how to n use new equipment when we're out and about was also something that was kind of funny. Um, so we, you know, learning how to do these things, learning how to, to, keep up learning how to uh, pace yourself. That was something I had to greatly do last week, was pacing myself um, through the varying chores that I ended up having to do. Um, I also needed to bring in firewood, and I wasn't sure if I would be able to do that. There is oftentimes mold on the firewood, which is something that um, very heavily affects me. And also just the process of it. My muscles um, have really struggled through this process. But it was very empowering last week to be able to um, do all these things, do them successfully, and feel good doing them. I mean, there's so much to be said about being outside and enjoying the outdoors, the fresh air, and doing something different. That is just so key, is keeping ourselves feeling alive and and empowered that empowering feeling is something that can really be healing it can really carry you through um when you're in survival situations when you're in um you know new situations of having to keep the homestead going because of circumstances how many of you have ever experienced this kind of stuff how many of you experienced it on your homesteads many of you homestead i know tammy has been uh, dealing with uh, excessive amounts of snow and extreme temperatures too. I didn't notice that Kelly was on here, but Kelly struggles too there in Montana. They've had record, record low negative temperatures and they have animals to contend with. So there's always something to be um, adjusting and overcoming and conquering. And um, as the week progressed, uh, the biggest concern for me was being able to get my rig out of here so that I could go get the mountain man on Sunday. And that was really a concern because we had gotten um, last week between 12 and 16 inches of fresh snow. 
So I was able to keep the driveway clear, but where the driveway ended, there was a wall of snow. And I did have all four chains on the truck, but it's a mile long lane and it's a situation where you get in the truck and you say some heavy duty prayers and then you keep that truck moving. You, if you stop, you're done. You got to keep that truck moving, keep it on the road, not in the ditches on either side, not in any of the water drainage areas. You got to keep her moving. And so it's a prayer from one end to the other. And I decided to wait till it was really, really cold and take it out there. So Saturday night, I took it out to make sure I could get out. I did have some backup things arranged, but I got it out there Saturday night. I was all excited. I was able to get it out there. I took the Rhodesian Ridge back with me and she and I walked back. And, you know, I was thankful I had my day lined up for Sunday, but God had other plans. It ended up being negative four on Sunday. And I walked out there to start the truck, and it is diesel. So for those of you with diesel, you'll you totally understand right off the bat. It was cold, and she wouldn't start. So I hiked back in here. I made, I don't know that I made the mistake, but I took a shortcut across a clear cut um, to get to the house faster so I could start lining things up and uh, ended up in waist deep snow and uh, push through that so when I got in the house I was pretty much soaking wet because I was pushing through this deep snow and I'm I've got short legs so it was it was something but the thing is guys I had things lined up Saturday night so that I had things lined up prior to Saturday night that I had backup that I had people that would go run and get him if I couldn't get out but I called them all off because I was able to get the truck out to the gate so I had to start making some calls and arranging things and I had somebody who would pick him up at the airport two hours from here but they couldn't bring him any further. I had a friend who could go um, about a third of the way but couldn't go any further and I didn't know anybody in between and everybody else that I had that I could have called I felt like I would have really inconvenienced them with such short notice. So, I felt like it was me, the mountain man, and God, and that was where I needed to keep my focus and just depend on God to get me out of this mess. So, I got on the four-wheeler. I was able to get out the lane. That was quite sketchy, too. Uh, the snow is so deep. So, got out there, and it was 11 degrees. It was 1030, and around 10 o'clock, and got in the truck and just said some heavy duty prayers, you know, God, this is all you. I don't have any other options. So said my prayer, turned the key, nothing at all happened. When I was out there before, I was a little concerned because the more I pushed it, the lower the battery went. And of course, now it's a mile down the lane. It's not here at the house that I can do anything. Tried again and it started to tr it wanted to start. So, I was able to get it started. So God came through again. What a blessing. So ended up driving back through here, called everybody off, locked up the house, and walked back out once again and uh, managed to go get the mountain man. I ended up being 20 minutes late, so that wasn't too bad. was going to surprise him. He knew that there was somebody else coming to get him, but uh, his dumb phone wasn't working so well and my smartphone wasn't speaking well with his dumb phone so he wasn't getting the messages very well. So needless to say I didn't surprise him but I did get him. Now you guys have been messaging here. Angela says we have had a state of emergency in Oregon this last week. Trees and slides took out much of the electricity. Ours was only out three days but some maybe another month. Wow. Wow, sending lots of prayers your way. Yeah, this weather is just insanely crazy. So, you know, I, I really feel everybody's having to really adapt and overcome a lot of weird things this winter. Chad says, oh, praising him. Yes, thank you. Yes, it was just really awesome. And I had great prayer warriors in the wings. Chad and Tammy and Kelly were doing some praying for me uh, to help me uh, line things up. It was just kind of a crazy circumstance. And thankfully, I plan well. I had lots of errands scheduled because when you go two hours from home, you try to get things in those areas that you don't normally run to get because we don't just 
pick up and go and get things. We kind of schedule them and, and make a big loop so that we're not wasting fuel or time. You know, we're not very needy. We're very content back here with what we have. And if there are needs, you know, they don't typically rock the boat. Um, so it was very fortunate. We did manage to get all the errands done. Um, and got back in here not it wasn't too too awful uh, thankfully it ended up being quite cold Sunday evening so we didn't have any problems getting in here Sunday evening but yesterday getting out and last night coming in last night coming in was bad so there's not even a point in trying today with all the rain we got so it's learning how to adapt and overcome and um, knowing what needs to get done and also having your homesteads, for those of you that are setting up homesteads, having your homesteads set up in a way that the chores are um, easily accomplished by both parties, um, spouses, even children, when one has to leave. You know, um, he did, the mountain man did have the opportunity to stay the night in Spokane, but I know my man, I know that after being in especially Atlanta, Georgia, like City, our local town, we, we ran errands yesterday for friends and helped them get food and different things they needed. And um, just our small population of 3,000 people town does us in. We came home and we were like so exhausted. I, we just are not made to be in town. So then to know he was in Atlanta, Georgia for that long, uh, I knew he was spent. I knew he was done. I knew he wanted to just come home and crash. So I made an extreme effort to go get him, and I was very thankful that all worked out and that we were able to get back in here. Um, plus, we're pretty codependent, so it's kind of nice to... I, I didn't want to leave him anywhere. I wanted to go get him. <laughs> but I just wanted to share on that because there's a lot of improvising that needs to be done at times, and it's how we handle it. You know, I was trusting God. Good morning, Mona. I was trusting God for the outcome. I wasn't disheveled. I wasn't, you know, all wound up. I got good exercise Sunday <laughs> walking in and out of here because if any of you have walked through deep snow, you know it's challenging. I didn't wear my snowshoes because I had made trail with the truck, so I figured that was sufficient. It was a lot easier walking out the third time after I had run the four-wheeler through, too. So, good morning, Cindy. So it's nice when, you know, you can handle these incidents without being all freaked out, all worried, all wound up. You know, that added stress just makes things so much worse on your body, and it's just a lot of wear and tear that is unnecessary. So, and I, and I did do a video on the process, believe it or not, um, as I could. My phone died while I was out there from the negative four temperatures and, and, and that, but... Uh, it's really important that we plan. You know, having a plan, having a backup plan, I had all that in place. I knew who I needed to contact, um, and I knew what I needed to do. Uh, knowing how to put truck chains on, for those of you that live in areas where you, they're necessary, it's really important. You know, you learn how to do that ahead of time. It's not near as big of a panic or a struggle when you're trying to do that. Um, I will say this, Monday when I put the truck chains on, um, uh, thanks Mama Mona. Um, when I put the truck chains on, uh, Monday when we were stuck, I really had to wrestle with them and it was pretty much two hours of wrestling to try to keep them on the truck that the truck wasn't throwing them until I could get them latched both in the front and in the back. So, um, it was a lot of heavy lifting. They're heavy and, uh, it felt like my ribs were all broken for two, three days following, uh, just because I was working muscles I hadn't used in a while. Um, and I've told you before, I'm a no pain, no gain kind of person. So I look at that very differently than most people. Although that pain did not feel good, I did an Epsom salt soak and I just kept pushing myself. And the more you push yourself, and the more, it's just like working out. When you work out, the first day you work out, you're going to feel pain the next day. But the third day is when you really feel that pain. 
And, you know, you can choose to suffer and say, I'm never going to work out again. Or you can um, start working out and really getting those muscles loosened back up and, and getting rid of some of that pain in your muscles and keep going. And that's what you got to do. That's that's what is empowering to me is re-strengthening and rebuilding and, and um, healing. So I wanted to share this because it's kind of going to be a lead in to what I'm going to share with you today. I decided to do a part two of the Mind Over Health because we talked about the two different new protocols that I have in place here. And guys, like I said, I really can't tell you how much they helped me last week. The Melt Method that I spoke about is really, really an impressive um, and uh, really just intriguing to me um, to know what we can do to our own bodies very simply um, by just rehydrating our tissue. Our tissue of our body is something that um, even scientists and doctors aren't aware of all that it does for our bodies and how it doesn't necessarily directly communicate with our brain it inadvertently communicates with our brain and we have the ability through the through the divine way that God created our bodies to heal ourselves and to and to get ourselves back on a healing path and I know that there's so many people out there that are dealing with aches and pains chronic pain autoimmune illnesses, um, chronic illness, um, illnesses as a result of chemotherapy. Chemotherapy and radiation kill so much of the body. I know so many people that have conquered cancer and died as a result of the chemo and the radiation. And that is just, it's just devastating to me to know that that is something that we are um, seeing so much of when we, there are ways that we can heal ourselves and natural ways of healing that have been out there from the start of time. God has blessed us and given us so much in our environment to heal us and we don't tap into it anymore. And I've really grown to uh, dislike and, and lose faith in modern medicine and big pharma. When you're going to take a pill that's going to cure one thing and cause your liver and your kidneys and other organs to fail. I mean, some of the medications they wanted the Mountain Boy to be on that would have been lifelong for autism would have caused him probably to be on dialysis and other things as a result of lifelong medication and deterioration of other organs. Now tell me that makes any sense. Tell me that that's going to... Uh, give you any form of quality of life. So I really, through my videos and the different things we do, I really want to encourage you guys to dig deeper into natural medicines, to dig deeper into the gospel and to the Bible and to read about the powers that we have to move mountains. If we can move mountains... We can heal ourselves as well. God has designed us in ways that we can heal ourselves and bring healing to ourselves and to others. The power of prayer is huge. And all of this plays together. Um, the melt method, um, for those of you that are unable to get up and down off of the floor, there is a hand and a foot treatment. I have been using that twice a day for quite some time now. And um, I am seeing such great results in the um, amount of inflammation I have in my body, or should I say the lack of inflammation in my body. That has been one of my biggest struggles is the inflammation. Anybody that has chronic illness, autoimmune illnesses, knows how rampant inflammation is and how simple foods can create inflammation in the body. So... That is why eating had become so overrated for me because there's so few things I can eat that didn't affect my body in one way or another. And what is really unique with the melt method and using the hand and foot treatment, I think it's like a $46 kit. It comes with um, the balls you need to easily manipulate your hands and your feet. And it comes with cards 
that uh, show you the treatment process. It also comes with DVDs. So um, it is very easy to use. And for those of you that are suffering, I want to highly, highly encourage you to check it out because it is um, has alleviated a lot of the tension in my neck and my shoulders. I end up with a lot of really weird headaches at the very top of my head as a result of inflammation and um, the different struggles I was having. And when I wake up that way, if I use the melt method right off the bat in the morning, I feel 95% better. So it is something that I want to heavily encourage you to utilize. What that works with the tissue and how it works is that our bodies need to be hydrated and so often we allow ourselves to get um, dehydrated and once we are dehydrated we can keep drinking fluid to rehydrate our organs and internally and so forth but our tissue doesn't rehydrate on its own it needs light manipulation and Many, most of us are walking around in a dehydrated state, especially our tissue. And if you imagine a sponge, you know when you have a sponge that you use to wash your dishes, if it's dry, it's not very easily manipulated, but when it's wet, you can very easily manipulate it. Think of that when you think of the tissue that holds your body together. So many doctors and scientists, you know, have felt that that's the only purpose of our uh, tissue is just to hold us together and and yes it is but if it's not in a good place and it's not in a good condition it's not gonna do its job well so therefore we're gonna be off kilter we're going to be um, uh, easily uh, tripping ourselves up out of balance so it's really really important that we rehydrate our tissue the melt method is something that I feel is an extreme gift to me in my healing process because of what it has done in such a short period of time. Angela has message. She says, electricity being out wasn't a big deal because we have gas range and wood stove, but our, our well is very deep, so it needs electric pump. Oh, I remember we were talking about that last week. So how have you been doing with that? Bought some bottled water, but couldn't flush because all right, let's see if it's going to let me view it. I don't see the whole message, Angela. But So you've maintained being able to drink and say hygiene, but you just couldn't flush the toilet. One of the great things to have on hand is a, a five-gallon bucket and a pool noodle. I know that sounds funny, but those um, pool noodles for in the swimming pools that the kids use to float around, you can put those around the edge of a five gallon bucket to use as a seat to go to the bathroom. And that makes it really convenient depending where you live. If you're in an apartment, it gets a little tricky because you don't have anywhere to go to dispose of the waste. But um, that's a great way to keep going without having to flush the toilet. I'm glad you got power back so fast. That's crazy that it's going to be a month for other people. So depending how they live and how prepared they are, that's going to be quite the struggle. Angela also said, I'm so looking forward to trying the melt process you're mentioning. Does the book explain in detail how to do it? Yeah, it does. Um, Sue Hitzman is just amazing. The I have to... She... She just amazes me how she puts things in layman's terms and how she explains things so that you can understand. Like I said last week, you know, I am delving into things in the body that um, I don't even truly understand how I'm understanding it. I know it's truly divine intervention and that God is enabling me to understand because um, normally reading something like that, I'd have to read it like six to ten times before I would actually absorb it and understand what they're trying to say as well as what you know how things actually work and Sue has a way of putting things into terms that just totally made everything click and um, I know you will thoroughly enjoy it for those of you that are interested in checking it out you can the link is down below it's treyerwilderness.com slash melt method and uh, I really feel that this is something that everybody should have on hand. The whole kit is like $228, something like that, or $200, $200. And um, if, if everything fell apart in the future, 
having this kit would enable you to keep your body realigned. Um, it would help you adjust yourself very easily. It would help you to get out of extreme pain and help keep your body in a condition that is going to um, work well for you in all conditions. So I really, really feel that this is something everybody should have on hand. It is just a great way to keep yourself healthy. Um, we gathered rainwater the first time, well pump went out for two days and then no rain the second time three days later. Did you have snow on the ground at all, Angela? I forget where you are. Oh, you said Oregon. So do you have snow too that you were able to melt snow and uh, utilize things that way as well? How many of you, how many of the rest of you have had things pop up where you had to totally improvise and adjust? And the other question is when you have have you been in a position that you've had yourself um, to the point where you weren't in a panic over it? That's the key thing, is that preparedness enables you to be able to not only be prepared, but be in a position where when things happen, you're not in a panic, you're not overstressed, you've processed these things, you've maybe even practiced these things. So it's kind of second nature and it doesn't enable you to... Um, hit this panic mode because when you're in that panic stress mode you are kicking in some of the worst hormones in your system that for a, a short period of time um, it's an adrenaline boost and it helps but over a long period of time you're really looking at harming the body um, when when you are stuck in a fight and flight mode for too long you are actually starting to cause illness to set in um, opening a doorway for illness to set in because your organs are in such a position and your immune system is confused that you will actually bring in illness and your body won't fight it. Um, Angela says we had about five inches but it started melting the second day. I kept telling the kids to get some snow but they were more interested in playing in it. <laughs> right, exactly. They don't understand the concept of all the other aspects that are required. So, right. Well, you had those things and, and that was helpful and um, in moving forward, uh, what would you do different to alleviate any of the stresses that you might have gone through or the struggles that you might have gone through during that situation? Because um, it's good to reevaluate. When you go through these situations, it's good to reevaluate things and um, see what you could have changed or done differently um, to make your life easier for future circumstances. And, and also, you know, when there's kids involved, now I don't know how young we're talking, Angela, but um, as your kids age, it's good to include your kids in this process and to educate them as well. You know, when you have fails on the homestead or at home, you know, and you've learned what you need to do to overcome and, and fix that fail, it's important that the kids are involved in that and that they see that. Uh, you know, we've often thought that the mountain boy wasn't listening to everything we were saying or that he didn't care about the things we were saying. You know, just as an example, eating well and making sure you're eating all organic and non-GMO foods because it will keep your body running better, it will keep you healthier, it will keep you from getting sick more often, and it will keep those toxins from affecting your body. You know, and kids, you know, they see the uh, um, Cheetos and all that great stuff on the shelf, and, you know, organic gets thrown in the trash. However, we were shopping yesterday, and we took him out too because he's been cooped up for a while. And uh, he did some of his shopping and was really impressed with his shopping skills. I had mentioned, I just happened to walk past the fish um, container and there was some fish on sale. I said, if you want some kind of different meat, there's some fish on sale. So he went over and he checked and he instantly said, it's farm raised. I don't want that. I didn't look. I just saw the tag. So what I've been teaching um, has been instilled. So the more we educate our children, and and we may think they're not listening, but the more we make an attempt to educate our children on things, um, the more we set them up for success in the future. Uh, 
because they listen a lot more than we realize. And, you know, granted, it may not mean a whole lot to save a bucket of snow for the toilet. Um, maybe when they're in that position and they're panicking and realizing they don't, aren't able to flush and don't want to look at what's in the toilet, that maybe they'll, it'll click, you know, that they could utilize the snow or they could utilize rainwater or whatever, or that they might set a bucket in the tub when they know something's coming their way and have some extra buckets of water uh, sitting there waiting. So you've got 16, 14, and 11-year-old, and yes, they're involved in everything. Awesome, and that's key. You know, when, when we involve our children in things, um, and the more we involve them, the better off they are, the better off they will be. You know, we did a, I had mentioned last week that we had to butcher our chickens and the duck, and, you know, many people get really upset with us. Our, our video on YouTube has been censored for ages because of the gruesomeness of butchering a chicken. But you know what? I really feel it is an important life skill for children to have to know how to not only raise the animal but to butcher it to eat it and and like I said last week it's the only bad day our animals ever have so you know teaching our children these things letting them see how we react to things and the more we plan and are organized and and learn how to successfully have things lined up that we're not in a panic and they see us being able to just successfully process through the things that need to get done, you know, that's something that they're going to learn too. Uh, you know, nobody wants to be in a stressed and panicked state. And I was grateful that I did plan things the way I did, that my day was started early. I didn't want him to have to run around and do errands with me. I just wanted to get him home. I had a chicken on the wood stove with carrots and seasonings, and I had cooked up a big batch of potatoes in the morning. I boiled them up so they were already soft. All I had to do was come home, reheat them, and drain them and mash them. Uh, so he had a nice meal. I had it all planned all easy that way too when we get home from a long day of running there's food I don't have to put myself out I don't have to do something and push myself when I'm thoroughly exhausted already so but my my day was started early I started hiking out at quarter of eight and and being that I did that I gave myself plenty of time if things didn't work and if things fell apart and um you know, you just roll. You got to roll with stuff. I've always told you that. Learning to roll with things uh, eliminates the the need for panic and the need for worry. Those are all from the enemy. Those are all negative emotions that the enemy just loves to instill and, and stick in your head. And just for the record, if you ever cut across a clear cut or cutting across snow to make a shortcut, I did go through the trees first. The trees will eliminate heavy heavy snow because they block the snow from falling in those areas so it was really easy hiking under the trees the only problem was I ran out of trees so I had to cut across some of the clear cut and that's where I ran into the waist deep snow so you know knowing these things uh, can make your life so much easier I could have gone around and made the whole loop but it would have you know added another five minutes or more to my trek and I was trying to get in the house fast so it's also a challenge you know it's not like I was gonna put myself in danger in any way but knowing these things um, is just so important and practicing there are certain skills that we have um, and that we do like maybe stocking up on food stocking up on food is not something that you need to practice um, but starting a fire is something that you need to practice and if you're ever in a situation where you're out and it's raining or you've got 60 plus inches of snow surrounding you or you've had it 60 inches of snow for three weeks, everything's wet. And when you get out in that situation, that's going to cause a stressful situation because you're going to have to struggle to start a fire unless you practice and you learn things um, that you can maybe pull um, pieces of cedar cedar's going to be dry, or the bark off of a cedar tree, or pulling things from up in the trees that's going to be dry versus what's on the ground. Learning how to do these things and practicing them is really important because, again, that alleviates the stress when you're in a stressful situation. And we're going to be starting to do a lot more of that um, and sharing some of our older videos on YouTube. We were diverse in the beginning, and we had a mountain man, a mountain woman, and a mountain boy channel on YouTube. 
and then we started Treyer Wilderness and I need to pull some of those older videos over but we've got a lot of videos on teaching your kids all these essential skills for survival for wilderness survival for you know if you're even out hunting and you get stuck and you know how to handle yourself things you can do what you can use in your environment and the tools to carry on you even when you're out hunting in a small hunting pack what are things you should have you know so these are things that we educate on and I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel you can do that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube and we are going to start posting heavily on patreon I stayed away from there for a while because there was a lot of um, negative chatter about Patreon, but I want a place where we can have a really nice tight-knit community and it costs three dollars a month which I think works out to 11 cents a day it's a way that you can support us in what we do um, but it's also a place where you we can actually have heartfelt conversations and communicate very well and very regularly uh, versus just our weekly video like this or on YouTube or whatever so you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Patreon. Angela says our 16-year-old butchers most of the chickens and rabbits by himself. All three help with butchering of hunted animals and sheep and goats. They are better at it than me. I'm realizing I need to learn. Well, and you know what? That's awesome. That is so, so awesome. And, and that the kids have the desire to do it and understand the purpose in it. Not that it's some um, gory thing or that they look to it um, with some kind of gory intention. They, they see their use. Children want to be useful. Children want to be appreciated. Children want to play a role and be a part of things. They may not express that. They may not know how to express that. But that's what they feel most pleasure in is being a help to somebody. And also, um, you know, uh, learning the skills and, and having that gratification of playing a role and, and being able to accomplish those things. And for us too, Angela, it's very empowering to be able to know that we have the ability to do the things we need to do to survive, whether male or female. And, and it's important for us women to educate the guys on some things, and it's important for the guys to educate us women on things. That's how we were made. We were made to help one another and to be helpmeets and um, to be able to... Um, better and enhance one another and that's that's a great skill um, to have is being able to nurture each other and I think that that is really really important now I want to read some stuff to you I talked to you about the melt method but I want to read this chapter to you it's a little long but um, and maybe what I'll do is just put the images well I'll start reading this to you because I really feel that this is important stuff as far as um, how stress and trauma affect the brain and the body okay so this is now I'm moving into the wired for healing you can find the book um, by the link below it is treyerwilderness.com slash wired for healing and I really feel that this book is an important read by everyone because um, there are many things that affect the brain mold um, chemo radiation um, certain illnesses, anything that causes us trauma. Um, PTSD is something that is very real. Depression is real. All these things are real. I, I told you last week how I never dealt with anxiety before and all of a sudden I, I had to deal with um, anxiety and, and uh, just went blank, um, panic attacks. That was really really um, interesting for me to process that it was even more interesting for the mountain man to process that because um, he clearly had no idea what was going on I sort of had an idea but it was just something that I'd never dealt with before at one point in my life I dealt with uh, a, just a, a minute amount of depression and ah, there we go sorry started spinning on me all right all of these things um, once we've experienced them, enable us to have empathy and also enable us to help others. So, you know, there's so many ways that we can help others. And that is by sharing our experiences, um, also sharing Jesus with them, uh, our testimonies. You know, we have so many ways that we can, 
we can help people, but it is not a characteristic of everybody. Um, evidently, it's my nature. But I know that there are a lot of meek and shy, timid people who aren't very willing to, or, or are more fearful of stepping up and sharing their experiences, sharing um, that they've walked through depression or that they've walked through breast implant illness or that they've walked through anything or how God has moved in their lives. Um, so I want to encourage you, if that is you, um, work on that skill because you have the ability to save lives in so many ways. So consider that because once we've experienced something, we all have a nugget that we can share with somebody. And that's why I'm sharing this because this is really profound to me of um, the ways we can heal ourselves. And you guys know I've already been working on this. I've been working on the positive thinking. I've been working on how I talk to myself. I've been working on so many different aspects of breathing and learning to heal myself, learning to calm myself, learning to calm my body when it is um, reacting to, say, mold or whatever. I have learned how to manipulate my mind and my thoughts to help heal myself and this is just the next step in it and and has really really made um, an impact and just awed me this chapter is called how stress and toxic trauma affect the brain and body stress can wreak havoc on the mind and body and is a big contributing factor to disease we hear this often enough, but we rarely think of stress in any other form than um, psychological. Even more rarely do we think that our reaction to stress has a direct impact on our health and well-being. Stress, in all of its forms, can be toxic to the brain at the physical, emotional, and psychological levels and can cause brain trauma. Stress also affects the body's ability to regulate inflammation. So, this is huge for people with fibromyalgia, people with um, lupus and autoimmune diseases. Systemic inflammation is implicated in many chronic diseases and not surprisingly is also involved in limbic system conditions. While an acute trauma may cause the initial inflammation, it is the maladapted stress response involved with the lim limbic system dysfunction that keeps the brain and body in a state of chronic inflammation. Psychological, emotional, and physical responses to stress are equally as important and can cause the brain to release a specific chemical cocktail that causes a chain of reactions in the body. During a perceived threat situation, the brain sends a stress alert signal to the rest of the body. The adrenal glands located on the top of the kidneys release adrenaline, also known as epinephrine. This increases heart rate, breathing, and blood pressure. It moves blood away from the vital organs and into the extremities to prepare for fight and flight. Senses become keener in a protective response in order to help assess the environment for impending threat. If the threat persists for more than a couple of minutes, the, adrenal, the adrenals uh, release cortisol. Cortisol remains in the body a lot longer than adrenaline and can damage brain cells, especially in the hippocampus, the area for memory and learning. During this period of high stress, the body releases neurochemicals that increase sensory perception, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch to protect oneself and to keep track of both real and perceived threat. After the threat has passed, the body stops producing neurochemicals that are associated with survival and returns to a natural resting state and sensory perception returns to normal again. In a healthy stress response, the hippocampus detects that the threat is no longer present and sends messages to the hypothalamus to stop releasing stress hormones and to start releasing calming hormones in order to bring the brain, brain and body back into a state of balance or homeostasis. However, this is not the case in conditions where the limbic system dysfunctions, which is where I am at and where many people are at. The hippocampus no longer has a context for safety and sends inappropriate alarm messages to the hypothalamus to release more stress hormones. This becomes a negative feedback loop. Stress can also increase the uh, permeability of the blood-brain barrier, the complex system of the blood vessels that protects the brain from toxins circulating in the bloodstream. An example of this occurred during the Gulf War when Israeli soldiers were given a drug to protect themselves from chemical and biological warfare. Normally, the drug should not have crossed the blood-brain barrier. However, stress had somehow increased the permeability of the blood-brain barrier 
resulting in symptoms associated with the drug itself, including nausea, headaches, and dizziness. Thus, it makes sense that the blood-brain barrier may be weakened in patients with limbic system dysfunction, leaving the brain more vulnerable to toxins. Toxic trauma can also cause disruption in neuroimmune signaling that is in connection between the brain and the immune system. When in a chronic stress response, the brain's immune cells, the micro, microglia, overreact. Microglia are basically white blood cells in the brain that represent the body's first line of immune defense and their overreaction triggers the excessive secretion of cytokines that can cause pain and neurodegeneration, increase inflammation, and alert gene expression. Now, this gets deep, but guys, what this is saying is that we get stuck our brains get stuck in a very negative uh, loop. It is a fight and fight loop where our bodies are constantly in a stress mode. So, you know, you've got all that good stuff happening when you are in a true stressful situation that keeps you alert and keeps your blood pumping and keeps you moving. That's important. But when you're stuck in that state, all the time. Imagine what that does to your adrenals and to your liver and to everything because you are constantly in that mode. It's just going to cause you to be excessively overtired, exhausted, drained, and totally unable to heal your own body and for your own body's healing mechanisms to work. What's really awesome is with this, along with the melt method, Doing the melt method at night allows your healing mechanisms in your body to be triggered. And so if you are in this fight and flight mode, that enables your body's healing mechanisms to be um, put into action so that when they're supposed to be in that healing process at night while you're sleeping, that they are. So incorporating the two of these together um, is just so incredibly powerful. And I totally attest to the fact that that is why I felt as good as I did last week. The other thing is, what is really awesome with this Wired for Healing is that she walks you through the process. And she also has classes um, that are uh, able to be purchased to help you go through this healing process that depression, PTSD, fibromyalgia, um, all the chronic illnesses out there, all the pain illnesses out there, um, lupus and, and fibromyalgia are extremely painful. So are many autoimmune diseases. I have gone through excessive pain, but I've worked myself through that without using pain meds. And I was doing a lot of this and, and, and incorporating it with the breathing and um, the biggest thing that this has done for me is telling my body that it is not my body, it's my brain. I told you last week how I was in the shed working and I did not have struggles. Last week I had, and I told you I've had pain in my legs since September that we couldn't get to dissipate. I don't have that pain anymore. Your body is ends up in a fight and flight mode and, and then add, um, dehydration to it. You've just got this massive mess and it's no wonder our bodies are are struggling so much. Then you've got all the toxins in the air, all the toxins in our food that just add to this concoction. So when you start realizing that you can alter all of this and you can change this and you can change your pain levels, by using the Wired for Healing, you can actually retrain your brain to realize that the pain you feel is not pain. It's your body's brain and the limbic system misfiring and misfunctioning and telling you that you have pain and leaving you in a state of pain. Our brains can be reprogrammed and are in a good way and our brains can be put into a place of healing um, if we learn the process and this is just so amazing to me because I am seeing such tremendous results I have been focusing on this for three years slowly adding the pu puzzle pieces in to my healing process and learning how to overcome this stuff because I am not someone that wants to just sit by and allow this illness to take me down I want to be able to function to the best of my abilities now 
God may have plans that I'm supposed to be in a state of, um, uh, of, um, for lack of better terms, despair that my body isn't meant to heal 100%, that he's going to use me. There are many people in wheelchairs that God has placed in that position because God is using them and their abilities in that place. So sometimes there are places we are meant to not leave and that we are meant to shine um, in our current state. But I'm seeing that God is putting things in my path and teaching me and showing me ways to heal my body so that I can show this and share this with other people. There are so many women and people following behind me with this illness that I have gleaned nuggets along the way that will help them in their healing process. Angela says this is so eye-opening. You can go from thinking I must be crazy because of the bad health to there's hope. Absolutely. And it's amazing. I, I want to read this whole thing to you guys because, but it's, it's so very long. So do you want me to read this or do you want me to just put the clips in the description? I can add the photos in the video for those of you on YouTube, but do you want me to read all this or do you want to read it on your own? I mean, this is just fascinating to me and amazing to me that we have the ability and that, and that a lot of these illnesses are a result of our brain just misfiring. Um, you know, autism is something where the brain, it's neurological, the brain misfires. What if we have the ability instead of to drug these kids, but to teach them how to adjust. And there have been so many ways I've taught the mountain boy to adjust, but this just, this just blows me away. Our military coming back from such trauma and having PTSD to being able to retrain the brain. The woman that wrote this book was dealing with the same thing I am, not breast implant illness, but mold toxicity and chemical toxicity and smells and odors and, and, and the electrical, uh, waves, you know, having issues being, and I think that's part of the problem that I have when I go to town is that it just drains me from all the electrical stuff around me. I'm not used to that here at the house. So it's just very draining, but to be able to, instead of seclude yourself and live your life feeling like you need to live in a bubble to being able to retrain yourself with positive thinking and to have hope and to remove yourself of pain and discomfort and struggles and actually live a wholesome healthy life. It's amazing to me and it's something that we can simply do for ourselves and it's something that God has blessed us with in the ways that our bodies work. You know, God made our bodies. I'm going to have to share one. Of, next week, I will share something with you that is just also very profound and amazing. But God made our bodies in such a way, you know, that we are able to heal ourselves and to, um, and just how, how, how our bodies are made is just so amazing. And, you know, we are, we are just progressively learning and tapping into all that the body can do. And that's what this is to me. This is, advancement in learning how our bodies truly work and how our systems, the different brain functions and the different brain lobes and areas and how it communicates with one another and how we are able to regulate them and to address them. And it's just very fascinating, very amazing. So yes, there is extreme hope and there is extreme amounts of healing. There is a woman that was, um, that went through the same thing I did about the same time I did. She ended up quarantined for like six months um, because she had so many other diseases setting in in her body because of her immune system. And you know, she it was a bodybuilder. She um, was a trainer, a physical fitness trainer, and um, she just stopped focusing on her illness and focusing focused on her healing, focused on becoming and visualizing where she wanted to be and what she wanted to become and, and what, you know, where she was previous to her illness and, and how she was going to get back to that place without looking back, without looking at her illness. And you know, guys, she has conquered and has, and, and I've been following her. I've been following her progress and she is doing this. She alleviated 
thinking about the negativity and focusing on the positive and she was able to retrain her brain. That is what she did. So it is just so amazing and there is so much truth in it. There are so many people that have accomplished this and done this kind of thing. But it requires an open mind and, it re and, and, and that's all it requires. It requires an open mind and being willing to read. And if that means you have to read and reread to understand this, um, pray that God will give you the ability to understand it so you don't have to do that. Because I'm telling you, this stuff a year ago, six months ago, would have made no sense to me whatsoever. It would have taken so much for me to understand what she's talking about because unlike Sue with the melt method where she describes things into a in a way that uh, layman's terms this woman explains things the way they happen in the body so um it may require a little bit of um thinking or rereading but like I said, if you pray that God will help you to understand this and put it to pieces together, um, she does explain things um, in the way it has affected uh, through different illnesses, through the PTSD, through, she had mentioned, um, with the uh, Gulf War. So, but, but we can pray out to God too and ask him to help us to understand things better or to give us a mind to see, um, to, to perceive. So... I just want to encourage you guys that if you are in a position of poor health and you've been there for a long time, I really want to encourage you to check out the MELT method and I want to encourage you to check out this book. Um, to get the hand and foot kit and to get this book, you're probably looking at 60 bucks, maybe $70. And um, we understand we understand how hard it is to come up with seventy dollars um, we've been in a financial crisis for three years uh, as a result of my health so I understand that um, I was gifted with one and saved for the other um, this is important stuff and rather than spend it on my healing um, and, and with medical doctors I chose to spend my money here so that I can learn to heal myself and help others. Um, I have a true believing in this kind of stuff because I've seen the results in my healing for the last three years, but I've been using this kind of healing with my children and myself since I'm 14. So it just requires an open mind. A lot of people get so hung up and caught up in our medical system and believe that that's the only way and that's and if I would have had that mentality or stuck to that mentality, I would not be here today because um, what I had going on when I was first diagnosed um, would have taken hundreds of thousands of dollars to diagnose. And even then, I would have been lucky if somebody would have put all the pieces together. Um, there were so many things going on, and that's what um, I am trying to alleviate for these women that are dealing and coming up behind me with... Uh, the same illness because it's not being diagnosed properly and there's a lot in our society that is not being diagnosed properly there are a lot of people that are put on Prozac and different um, medications and a lot of pain meds because people doctors aren't willing to look outside of the textbook and do any further research to be able to figure out what people are dealing with um, Angela says if you get hand and foot book kit for $40 or $50 can you get the rest of the kit later yeah she sells everything in, in pieces and when you get the kit hey baby are you down there yeah. could you bring up the hand and foot kit for me the, who? The, <laughs> the hand and foot kit the melt the melt stuff thank you um, and I have the book over here um, the hand and foot kit is um, is is our is a kit of balls. There are soft balls and there are harder balls in there, and there's a bunion um, uh, band in there also. Thank you, love. And you can attest to this that this is helping you. What? This that this is helping you. Yeah. How do you feel it helping you? Uh, I'm putting him on the spot. More energy. Um, some of the aches and pains aren't there. And you've got lots of them. Well, yeah, I've got over 14 broken, different broken bones. So right, and he he rode bulls for 11 years professionally. So um, 
he's got lots and lots of aches and pains and used to wake up and look like an old man crawling out of bed and you don't do that anymore. Not, not like, like you did. Not like I did. No. 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 Awesome. Okay. Yeah, it, it's definitely, it's something you got to have an open mind to for sure. Chad said hello, brother. <laughs> hey, man. Hope you're doing good. Um, praying for you. Uh, it's definitely something you got to have an open mind to. Um, at one time I would have <laughs> laughed and said it's a bunch of bull, but, um, pocus. but it, it does really help. Um, it's, it's kind of amazing how that stuff works. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it does, does awesome stuff. So. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll show you this kit and uh, the mountain boy has been using this um, and he has made it a point to tell me um, that he noticed a difference instantly I told you guys this summer he had gotten dehydrated pretty good and he was dealing with um, dizzy spells and just not feeling good especially in the heat and um, uh, he started doing this and hasn't had any of the dizzy spells at all since so it is rehydrating his tissue where just drinking would not do, do that sufficiently. Okay, so you've got a tiny squishy ball and a larger squishy ball. And then you've got a, squishy ball. a squishy ball. Anything but a squishy ball. Anything but a squishy ball, right. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this up. And then it has a harder ball, a large one, and a small one. And then, like I said, it has a bunion band. Um, for those of you that have bunions to help get rid of that pain, um, you, you get, uh, the bag and the balls and you get, um, these cards that show the techniques, which there's like, um, five or six techniques that you use to do this and it takes 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So I sit down with my cup of coffee. I take a, a drink of eight ounces of water and I start doing this. To me, this is very relaxing. At first it was kind of weird because the motions are awkward and stuff, but once you get used to doing them, it's just so very relaxing. So I love doing it before I go to bed just because it relaxes me. Um, if you guys are racing like I am, and I'm sure many of you are, um, you know, you feel a little stressed when you hit, when you go to bed and when you lay flat, it's kind of like, oh, you know, so this is a nice 10 minute protocol prior to going to bed that enables you to relax and brings your body to a state of healing and it encourages that that process of healing to take place during night so this is like 45 46 dollars okay and then um i don't have the roller up here but the roller can be purchased separate and the roller is another process that you do while laying on the ground um, so for those of you that are in a position where you are in a lot of pain and can't get up and down off the ground, this will do the same thing. This will get your body fluids moving and it will start pushing fluid into the body. And it's interesting that when you do the foot process, um, I hadn't done that right away. I did that, um, last week I was doing the hand and foot and also using the roller and, um, really, like I said, guys, uh, you know, I, I know I could have done what I did last week without doing this um, and been in the same position. I mean, I felt great. That's the best I have felt in a long, long time. So sweating plays a big role in that. And I tell you guys that all the time that it's important to exercise. I felt so great from all the work I was doing. And physical labor, guys, for me, you know, there's uh, the guys always say, you know, when we were growing up, cutting firewood really felt good. And I used to stack firewood. And I know what that feels like and it is a good feeling and doing that physical labor just feels so good and shoveling all that snow. I will share pictures later of all the snow I was shoveling. It just felt great. But this is $46 um, and um, you can get the ebook or the print book. Um, I always suggest if you can get the print book to have it because that will, you know, if, if all falls apart you still have the book. Your eye jiggers may not work later. You know, so having a print book on hand is good. Um, this also comes with the DVDs also. And she's, like I said, she does an amazing job of showing you how to use it. And once you start doing it, you'll do it like maybe 
10 times and then you won't need any guidance anymore. It'll just be second nature to do these, the process, but it really does make a difference on inflammation and pain levels. I don't have that pain in my legs anymore and I haven't done any treatments of any kind to my legs other than utilizing the hand and foot treatment. Um, the roller I laid on, but that helps with my back and getting my body realigned. Um, but I haven't done any leg treatments. So it's really very impressive. And the mountain boy said too, how he has so much more energy and just feels good. So there's a lot to be said about it. And you know, I, I do believe that it's something if a guy notices it because guys don't typically pay attention to that kind of stuff. And like he said, he would have laughed at this stuff a while back, you know, but he's seeing the results of it and he's seeing me healing and he's seeing me de delving very deep into a lot of the stuff and learning and seeing the results. So it really makes a big difference. So Angela, you can get that set. You can get the book and then later you can purchase the roller. Now I have the big roller and then she also has smaller rollers because she actually does a workout, um, utilizing this process as well. So, um, there, there are, there's the big roller, and then there are uh, two smaller rollers um, as well. But I just have the big roller and, and the uh, hand and foot set and the book. Um, and like I said, the book is very good. But if you get the uh, hand and foot, you will get the DVDs also. So it's um, definitely, worth, definitely worth the money. And I see there's some more comments here. Uh, Angela says, will you get a small commission if we order through this link? Um, yes, that link goes to Amazon. So yes, I will get a small commission on that. Um, and appreciate that. I appreciate your help on that because, um, uh, it takes a lot of our time to do this stuff, but it's what we're led to do. So, um, any help is always greatly appreciated. First time I did it last night, it helped adjust bones in my neck and chest. Yeah, it's really awesome. Um, when you are doing, thank you for saying that Mona, when you do this process, it actually removes the tension in your, um, neck and shoulders. Um, and she said, Oh my, hands were less shaky too. Yes, very visibly less shaky. That was amazing. So it really does, what this does is it rehydrates your tissue. It gets t uh, the fluids moving in your tissue, which enables your body to hold itself together better, whether it's your hands, whether it's your standing and um, holding you from leaning more forward, you know, um, a lot of times people get off center, they get off kilter, they lose their balance. And what this does is by rehydrating your tissue, you are pulling your body straight. You are giving your tissue the ability to hold your body in place the way it's supposed to, which keeps everything else moving. And it also enables at that point when it's hydrated for um, it to communicate with the other areas of the body and gets everything working properly. And it's such a simple process and this should not hurt at all. The amount of pressure you use is extremely light. And, um, uh, if at any point you feel any, uh, tenderness, any pain, you just need to back off on your tension and your pressure. It's that simple. So it is something that every, I really feel everybody should have on hand because one of the biggest things that we become is dehydrated. And once your body is dehydrated, like I said, your tissue is not going to rehydrate itself. So having these things on hand can help eliminate illness, can eliminate pain. One of the things she says, um, that has fascinated her and it's still spinning. There we go. I'm back online. Okay. Sorry about that. So God, I guys, I really feel God gives us, you know, Sue's gift is a God given gift. And I believe that wired for healing is, is a God given gift to her to help people. She progressed in her thinking beyond what scientists and doctors did. Both of these ladies have now uh, communicated with great doctors in the field um, to share their knowledge and step their progress, these doctors' progresses, up because of what they've learned. Sue Hitzman worked with cadavers to see how our tissue is made so that she could get a better understanding of it. These ladies have gone out to, to such extreme levels, um, to, to find 
ways to help people and I just think it's amazing and I want to encourage you to utilize it but then not only utilize it share what you've learned and you know through the process maybe you'll find um, your God-given gift and guys I want to remind you um, down below there is a very large and very continuously growing prayer list and I'd really like to ask that you um, lift these people up in prayer and if you have a prayer list or a, a Bible study or a church prayer list that you add these people to that prayer list and let's just keep this going because I feel so honored and humbled that these people reach out to me and request prayer and I am grateful and humbled that our community is known for that and I am grateful that you guys are a part of that because you guys add so much to it also you guys are tremendous prayer warriors and to know, you know, we are, we are called to help people. We are called um, to stop and pick up our cross and follow Jesus. And there are so many gifts in that, guys. And um, in doing so, you know, sometimes we've been called to do it. And it was a very amazing experience that we were called to pick up our cross and help other people um, in our particular situation right now um, and it is just very amazing you know um, some people will say that you know God wouldn't ask you to help others when your situation is so grim that he wouldn't ask you to to help others that you should be looking out for yourself and I don't I don't believe that I believe that God calls on us to help others no matter what, you know, um, we have a local family here that lost their home, I think it was Monday, uh, burnt to the ground. And I am just so excited to see what our community is going to do for these people. We are um, putting things together to gift them with. Um, I, I know Mona is putting some things together for them. Um, other people we know are putting things together for them. And the thing is, guys, you know, in this particular situation, there's a family that lost everything. They are in total devastation. They don't know what they're going to do. They're thinking of moving out of the area. Could you imagine all the um, pouring of love that we could offer these people that could just totally rock and shake their world up? And you know what? If they don't know Jesus, maybe they'll learn to know Jesus really fast by the outpouring of love. And you know, we are called as churches to do this. And did you want to say something? Uh, I can. I just, oh. Um, okay. I'll just. We've been talking about this a lot yeah. this last couple of days because of the different opinions and ways people view things. But we feel that the church. Shh, go I'm ahead. gonna. I'm gonna be doing a video on this, um, and I'm gonna be blunt and to the point on my videos. Everybody kind of knows me. You know that I don't mince words. Um, it's, it's, it's sad to me to see th that people in the churches are struggling, you know, whatever. And it, our situation has kind of opened my eyes to it. Um, but it's, it's, it's sad when people that are in the churches, um, receive less help from Christian brothers and sisters they receive less help from them and more help from people outside the church and we're called to be it's totally opposite of that mm -hmm. and it, it's it's like I said I'm gonna do a video on this um, but it, it's it's really disturbing and I'm not saying this to say that people ought to help us out and blah 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 blah, blah. I'm, I'm i'm not saying that at all um i you know we're okay I, I, god's we're, taking god's, care of god's, us, god's, <laughs> god's. but it's it, like i said it's it's opened my eyes our situation has has opened my eyes and to, to see this other people struggling and not being cared for yeah and and open my eyes to to help out in, in any way i can Right. Um, but 
yeah, like I said, I'm going to do a video on it, and it'll be up on our channel, but it's, it's just, it's really disturbing to me. Um, we're supposed to be a light and an example. Well, what kind of example are we being when we can't even help our own out? Right. Um, that, that's pretty sad, but yeah, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> The, um, Angelus asked what happened to the family. The family is fine. They were out safe. There were three children and the mom and dad, but they lost two vehicles and the entire house just burned to the ground. Um, a third vehicle was pulled out of the way and out of the way of flames. Um, but it's, it's like he said, you know, we see and we've been around so many hurting people, you know, and that's why I say we're not singled out in our circumstances. We might be struggling, we might be suffering, you know, excuse me, some people are like, oh, it's, you know, it's such a shame that you're, you're going to, you know, that the potential's there that you could lose your house after all you put into it. But, you know, I think that God takes us through things for a reason. And like I said, we see, em we, we, we form empathy through our circumstances, but it also strips us and it calls us to a place, takes us to a place where we are called to serve. And, and no matter what heartache you're going through, um, we are always called to serve. And when you serve through your rough patches, I believe it really takes you to a really awesome place. And that's what I was getting at before is that through our circumstances, you know, we were called to serve and that meant, um, you know, great things for us to, to walk away from our own responsibilities and serve others. And in doing that, um, you know, I, I truly believe we are, we are doing what Jesus called us to do. And it's just an amazing place. And, uh, you know, I, I brought this to some people's attention a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to say it to you. What if God called you tomorrow to pick up your cross and follow him and leave everything behind? Could you? I could. But that's because of where I progressed to. Could I have done that years ago? I don't know. But I could tomorrow. And I could today. And it's an awesome place to be, an awesome feeling to to know that what we would be doing had purpose and that what we would be doing would be helping others and serving others and that we are being a light and and it's just a very wholesome place to be and that all this stuff in the world doesn't matter and I just want to encourage you to serve I've, I've talked about this before um, but no matter what your circumstances are there's always something we can do whether it's physically helping, whether it's financially helping, whether it's gifting somebody. Sometimes just a simple card to somebody that you know is struggling can be the turning point in their life. I had something happen a couple weeks ago where um, a friend of mine pointed out um, how much I helped her in having a conversation with her nine years ago. I remember that conversation. It was just me sharing my heart, though, of, of encouraging her and empowering her that she was strong enough to walk out of a bad situation and that God would have amazing things for her on the other side of it. And she shared all that God has done in those nine years for her as a result of me empowering her. So it could be just simple words, guys, just simple encouragement, just simple love. And it's an amazing, amazing thing. And we have the ability and the power to do that. And I want to share something with you. There are some select people that we shared that Glenn was out of town. You guys know who you are. And you know, he was gone for a week and these people chose to check in on me. You know, I, I, I let them know because I knew they would be praying for him and I knew they'd be praying for me. And, you know, they stepped it up even more than that. And they checked in on me every day, some every morning and every night, just to make sure that I was okay and that he was okay and, and so forth. And you know what? That's a powerful thing to have, to know that, um, and these are people that um, are hundreds of miles away. It's just really powerful. So thank you guys. Thank you guys very much. Now, 
I read this last week, but okay, this is long. I shared this um, picture of the devotional last week. I shared this devotional last week, but I'm going to share it again because it really plays barren on what we're talking about. Mind over matter, mind over health, our minds over anything. We can accomplish anything if we have the power within us and it's strong enough to just push forward. And, and that power comes from God. Truly, truly, truly comes from God. So, uh, Philippians 4, 8, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good rapport, meditate on these things. Take control of your mind. The old saying goes, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. And for those of you that are sick, that is a truth. That, that's a truth regardless. But when we're sick and we're in pain and we're um, trying to heal and can't or just in a bad place of depression devil will find such a good time playing with our heads and and we need to remove him the bible says then satan entered judas so he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them it seems judas was constantly preoccupied with money and satan exploited it to his destruction during the three years that Judas followed Jesus, he heard him repeatedly warn about the danger of loving money, but he failed to get the message. Your mind never stops working, and if you don't take control of it, it will take control of you. Paul writes, whatsoever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good. Okay, it was spinning again, sorry. This is important. Paul, um... What you become is a direct result of what your mind dwells on. I want you guys to write that down and remember that. And always pay attention and catch yourself on what you are dwelling on. Because if you're dwelling on your sickness and you're dwelling on your pain, you're bringing more of it onto yourself. For, for real. Okay, so, and then it says, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, Life consists of what a man or woman is thinking about all day. John Locke says, the actions of men or women are the greatest interpreters of their thoughts. James Allen says, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. Okay, guys, you will be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. Our, our thoughts and our brains and our minds play a huge role in our lives and in our well-being. And we need to be aware of that. We need to really focus on that. So I shared this last week. I'm going to share it again. Save it to your phone or your eye jigger or whatever and read it because this is, this is important stuff. All right, guys. So this is why the Apostle Peter warns us to prepare your mind for action and exercise self-control. It's why the psalmist wrote, Keep back your servant also from the presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Note the words, meditation of my heart. The word for you today is take control of your mind. So I encourage you guys to really, really, really open your minds to this and take control of your minds and take control of your life, your health, your healing, your pain. It can be done. And there is hope. There is great, great hope. And there is great hope in Jesus. And if you do not know Jesus and you would like to know Jesus, please email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. Personal message me. I will send you a Bible. I will communicate with you. I will share the gospel with you. God I couldn't imagine my life without God in it. And taking control of our minds and allowing uh, God to heal our bodies is a huge, huge thing. And if you guys need prayer, please don't hesitate to ask. Everyone present here is are, are my, my huge prayer warriors, and I am just so thankful for them in my life. I am thankful for the community we have created. How awesome is it that people come and ask for my prayer warriors to pray for them? That's powerful, guys, because people have seen the power in our prayers. People have healed from the power of our prayers. Some of our audience members that have requested prayer have seen great healing, have seen great healing in their families. And it's just amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. So, guys, I'm going to say a prayer. Thank you for joining me. Today was long, but there is a lot to be shared here, and I don't want you guys to miss out on, on the hope of healing and the simplicity that is there for us to heal, for real. So, 
Dear Jesus, Papa, I just thank you for being present today, for loving on us, and for just helping each and every one of us in our walk. Many are going through struggles. Thank you for being there for Angela and for getting her power back in three days. And Papa, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around Chad and just continue to lift him and be with him. And, and Lord, just thank you for the miracle that you provided in his life this morning. And Lord, just thank you for being present and healing and loving on, on those that we pray for. Be with Terry and his wife. Just help them. And be with Pat Kenny and just continue to bless him and help him. He is such a sweet man with such a giving heart. And I just ask that you heal his heart and uh, just remove the cancer from his body. And Lord, I just uh, ask that you help Mona and Ken and remove the pains and the struggles they have. And Lord, just thank you for blessing my family. Thank you for bringing my mountain man home. Thank you for just continuously being present in our lives and all that you do. Thank you for using us as vessels to reach others and for giving us each, every one of us, purpose in life. And just give us the courage to share our nuggets and our our empathy and our love with other people to remember to simply open a door for a, an elderly person or to pick something up that someone has dropped rather than just sit there looking at it just make us active make us pro proactive in our lives that we are able to be a light and a help to others and allow us as christians to be the light and and be the um game changers let us be visibly it was spinning so i don't know how much of my prayer you heard but i'm lifting you all and i am excited to see what god does in each of your lives and share that with us when you join here on wednesday let us know what god is doing in your lives let us know the exciting things that have been happening and and how you're healing and and how you're reaching others